Welcome back. Now we are talking about arrays. So let me open up our default HTML document and save it as arrays.php. Okay. So what exactly is an array? An array is a collection of information. So you can have multiple things like, let's say for example, in one array you can store the name of someone, the age, the address, and so on. And you maintain the order of those things that they were stored in. Think of arrays as like a drawer where there's a draw number one, number two, number three, and each of those drawers uh, contain different information. Now we can refer to uh, all that information with one variable. So let's try and uh, create an array. Let me say array, or let me just say stuff is equal to, how you do it is you type array and you open bracket, close bracket like that. So this is an empty array right here. Now I can put stuff in here, like for example, let me put numbers in this case, let's start with a four, five, two, eight, nine, zero, and so on. Okay, so this is an array right there. So uh, there's one item in here, a second item, a third item, and so on. So how do we tell uh, PHP to echo out uh, a particular, oh sorry, a particular item? You can't just say echo stuff like that. Okay, this will not work. So let me try to run this in Firefox. Make sure your uh, ZAMP Apache is running and replace the part that says htdocs to localhost. Enter. So here you get an error that says array to string conversion because an array cannot be displayed like this. How you need to do it is to specify which location you want to collect an item from. So let's try and collect an item from location number one like that, okay? So that's how you do it. You put square brackets like that and you specify the value in there. So let's try this and see. And then we get a five. But if you look closely here, five is on the second position here. Now this is because an array is indexed from zero. So the first item is location number zero. So if I put a zero like that, I will get the four, okay? If I go to, uh, let's try location number five, I will get a zero. Now imagine if I typed location number 15, which does not exist, what we'll get is an error, an identified offset uh, 15. So which means that offset, that index does not exist. So you have to make sure you know, uh, and there are functions to do that, to know how long an array is. And you can do that by typing in the function count like that. Let me remove this part and then it's going to show me how many items are in this array. This array contains six items, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now an array can contain uh, other stuff as well. Like for example, instead of numbers, we can have text like book, okay, um, job, and let's leave a number there. Let's type in something like food. And in fact, an array can contain another array inside of it like that. Let me try and put uh, yay, hey, something like that, and so on. All right, so this array contains uh, book, job, to, food, and so on. So let's try and see how we can, uh, uh, let's try stuff two. Let me echo this, echo. Let me echo something in uh, this location, zero, one, two, three. Okay, let me do that, three. And then there we get food, just like that. Now, how, if I reference, uh, this is three, four, five, let me try and reference position number five and let's see what happens where the array is. And what I get again is an array to conversion, array to string conversion, because now it, I'm asking it to print out an actual array. So how do I actually get to these items in here? This item, uh, this array also has an index of zero, starting from zero, one, and so on. So I could join the two, I could say array, I point to this one, which is position five, then inside that position, I point to a memory location like zero, for example. So if I say five, zero, like that, this is going to work, it's going to bring me back the yay, as you can see it here. Now, there's one way to preview an entire array and see what's going on in there. You use the, uh, the print R, Instead of echo, don't say echo, just say print R, and then you say, uh, you give it the array stuff, uh, stuff two, for example. So let's see what we're going to get from that. 
and this is what we get. So now it's telling us that it's an array and you see the bracket, the opening and closing bracket. So it shows you that uh, zero, the, uh, the on location zero, the value is book on location one and so on. And in here, on location five, there's an array and inside that array, there's an index of zero with yay and so on. Now this doesn't look very readable. So we could use some, um, some HTML here. Let me echo some uh, pre-tags like that, pre, let me duplicate that and bring it below the print. Uh, should have gone here, actually. So these pre-tags are HTML opening and closing pre-tags. So once we use those, it's going to look more like this. This is at least more readable. So you can see zero represents that. And in location five, we have an array with two items in it, okay? This is uh, a good way to represent uh, stuff in there. Now, if I want to add more items to the array, what I could do is, for example, uh, I could go, let me leave this down here. I could say uh, stuff two and put a memory location. I know this ends at uh, five, okay? So I can put location six and give it a value. I can say stuff location six is equal to good, for example, okay? So now if I refresh the page, you will see that a new item has been added to the array. So the same way I can add another uh, item in here by saying um, uh, memory location uh, five, which is this one. I want to add something else in here at location three, like that. I say new good, something like that. So let me refresh now and you see another item has been added uh, over there. Now it's okay to refer to, uh, as you can see now, it's okay to refer to a location that doesn't exist yet and add a value, but it's not okay to read from a location that doesn't exist. Now, if you don't know, uh, for example, let's try and add location seven uh, in that order. You see, it can actually skip number six from five. It goes straight to seven because that's exactly what you specified over here. Now, if you don't want to run into this confusion of having to know the end of a, an array and so on. You just leave it blank like that. It's going to add the item automatically to the very end, add a new item like so. So if I refresh, you see it adds number six automatically by itself. If I repeat this action, it will add two of those, number six and seven like that. If I want to add inside this array, I'll do the same thing, but I'll maintain number five and then remove that. And then I'll have a new item just like that. So this is how you work with arrays. There are pretty, uh, a number of array functions that we'll look at in a, a later video. But for now, I think this is awesome. And by the way, this print R is just meant for you to see what's in an array when you're working and doing your thing. This is probably not information you'd want your users to see because otherwise they'll see stuff they're not supposed to. So this is just for you to use when you have a problem. Like for example, you want to check uh, what location is the information that I want, then you use it. Yeah, and so on. So I will see you in the next video where we talk about associative arrays.